Greetings. I'm Ben, and this is another R video. This is part four of our four-part video series looking at um, how to deal with poor model fit when you do a confirmatory factor analysis with um, at least one item that is relatively large. And so in the previous three videos, we looked at this model where we have a 14 item trait reactance variable, and then three other variables that have uh, four, four, and six items each. In the videos, we found evidence that one of the items in this attitude variable needed to be removed. Um, and we found some evidence for correlated residuals. Um, but even after fitting this model with those three modifications, we still get an SRMR of 0.08, an RMSEA of 0.07, a CFI of 0.9, and a TLI of 0.89, which is um, only just um, acceptable under the um, under the old recommendations and the Hugh and Bettler recommendations. Um, that model fit is is not going to get it done. And a lot of reviewers expect you to meet the Hugh and Bettler recommendations. And so what I'm going to demonstrate is how a lot of the um, noise in the measurement model can be dealt with through parceling. Um, and so if you remember looking through the residual matrix and looking through the modification indices, there were a lot of potential correlated residuals within the trait reactance variable. And then the first um, freedom threat item was trying to cross load on anger and uh, trait reactants. And what was really going on there is with a lot of these um, trait reactants variables, some of the items um, are getting at more of an emotional component of trait reactants. So I get frustrated, I get angry, I get aggravated, I get annoyed. There are a lot of items that, that basically start out like that. And those items have some correlated residual. And then what's happening with the freedom threat variable is that this first item is worded something like, um, this message threatened my freedom to make my own conclusion or something like that. So it's a very direct measure of freedom threat. And these other three aren't quite as direct. And so this is a more uh, straightforward measure of freedom threat. And therefore, it has a little bit more correlation with anger and trait reactants than uh, the latent variable as a whole. And so that's showing up as uh, a, an occasional correlated residual and an attempted at cross-loading. Um, so our model isn't misspecified. It just has some natural, understandable noise um, associated with those features. And so what we're going to do is create parcels. And if you want to know more about parcels or if you want to know more of the scholarly conversation about parcels, um, Todd Little has written a couple of articles about it. Um, this 2013 article, Why the Items versus Parcels Controversy Needn't Be One, I think is a really good article walking through um, the logic of parcels, the actual you know, mathematics of what happens when you do a parcel, why some people argue against parceling, and why um, he thinks that it's a really good idea to parcel. And one of the arguments that he makes is that if you parcel, instead of having all of these degrees of freedom, so this model has 316 degrees of freedom, and most of those degrees of freedom come from uh, having all of these over-identified latent variables. And one of the arguments he makes is that when you parcel, you can have all of your variables be just identified, meaning they only have three items. And so what you do then essentially is take all 14 of these trait reactance items and average them so that we only have three combinations of those 14. And then with these four items, we would just average two of them together and then keep the other indicators as standalone. And same thing with anger. And then with these five attitude items, we could actually create two parcels, which are combinations of two items each, and then leave one of the items as a standalone. And in the article, um, Little recommends balance parceling unless you have uh, sub-dimensionality in your factors. In other words, if you have sub-factors that you know about, then you want to make different decisions, and I'll make another video about that. But here, we don't have any sub-factors that we're intentionally aware of, and so what balancing will do is take the best item and pair it with the worst item um, and do that iteratively. 
So we see it looks like RS9 is the best item unless I'm missing something. And the worst item is RS6. So maybe we would start our parcel like that. And then our second parcel would start with our second best item, which, um, oh, I guess RS3 would be our yeah, second best item. And then we would look for our second worst item, which I guess would be RS8. So we would pair those together. And then we would do just do that process iteratively. And so there are 14 items here. So one of our parcels would be a combination of five, another would be a combination of five, and then the last one would be a combination of just four. And so I went ahead and did already create the code to generate the parcels. And you know, this looks just like what you might do if you were computing a variable to use outside of structural equation modeling. So if you were computing a variable outside of structural equation modeling, you would just say, okay, let's create a trait reactance variable using all 14 items and divide by 14. But here we're gonna create three parcels from the 14 indicators. And so the first one will have RS9, RS6, RS1, RS13, and RS11. And we just add those together in parentheses and divide by five. And so that creates our first parcel. Our second parcel will combine RS3, RS8, RS14, RS12, and RS10. So we'll get those five indicators in one parcel. And then our last parcel will combine RS2, RS4, RS5, and RS7. And so those four will combine to give us the third trait reactance parcel. So now we will estimate the trait reactance variable with these three parcels instead of these 14 indicators. And to maintain just identification for all of our variables, we can also parcel the freedom threat one item with the freedom threat four item. And so freedom threat one has 0.891, that's our best freedom threat item, and freedom threat 4 is 0.607, and so that'll actually help elevate the freedom threat 4 variable, and it'll also help um, eliminate the cross-loading we were seeing with the freedom threat 1 item. So we'll create that parcel, and we'll do the same thing. We'll pair anger 1 with anger 4 because, and the anger items are all pretty good, but you see, Anger 1 is the lowest loading and Anger 4 is the highest loading. So following our balancing logic, we'll combine those. And then for attitude, we'll pair 5 and 6 because 5 is the highest and 6 is the lowest. And we'll pair 1 and 2 because 1 is the second highest and 2 is the second lowest. So we'll create those two attitude parcels. And then we'll estimate a parceled model, which is just the trait reactance is estimated from the three parcels we created. Freedom threat is estimated from the one parcel that combines item one and item four, as well as indicator two and indicator three. So there's only one parcel in the freedom threat variable. The other two are still indicators. The anger variable is one parcel that includes anger one and anger four as well as the indicator for anger two and anger three. And then the attitude variable has two parcels, the parcel that includes five and six, and the parcel that includes one and two. And then we have the third attitude item as a standalone indicator. That way we end up with three things estimating each latent variable. So each latent variable is just identified. And if we fit that parceled model, um, one of the first things you'll notice is that we have, you know, a lot fewer indicators and therefore the degrees of freedom are quite a bit lower. So the uh, full model without any modifications had 318 degrees of freedom. After we made the correlated residuals, we had 316 degrees of freedom. This model only has 48 degrees of freedom. And if we look at the CFI, it's 0.99, the TLI is 0.99, the RMSEA is 0.02, and the FRMR is 0.028, so basically 0.03. And then if we look, the parcels all load onto the latent variable really nicely. So this um, ends up 
eliminating all of the noise we were getting from having all of the potential correlated residuals from trait reactants and from having the, the cross-loading try to come up on that first freedom thread item. And the latent relationships that we're estimating end up being very similar to the latent relationships we were estimating in the other model. So I'll, I'll demonstrate this in a second, but this, um, the relationship between anger and attitude is negative 0.248, which is very close to the estimate in the previous model. The relationship between freedom threat and attitude is negative 0.2. The relationship between freedom threat and anger is 0.74. Um, and then the relationship between trait reactants and freedom threat is 0.58, and between trait reactants and anger is 0.59. So if we go look at the latent estimates for the previous model, um, we see that the relationship between trait reactants and freedom threat is 0.74, and from trait reactants to anger is 0.67. Um, the relationship between trait reactants and attitude is not significant in either model. The relationship between freedom threat and anger is 0.82. Um, so all three of those relationships, the trait reactants, freedom threat and anger, and freedom threat and anger, all three of these are actually smaller in the parcel model than they are in the full model. The relationship between freedom threat and attitude is about almost the exact same, negative 0.2. And between anger and attitude, it's also almost about the exact same, negative 0.25. And so in, um, in a couple of instances, we notice that the parceled model underestimates some of the relation, some of the latent relationships relative to the full model. But the full model has a lot more noise in it in terms of the model fit being just barely acceptable by um, some of the looser criteria and being within the realm that we would reject the model following the more stringent criteria that a lot of reviewers do adhere to. Whereas the parceled model has almost perfect model fit. Um, so the reason that I think that parceling is an important solution is because when people have the full model with, um, with model fit that's acceptable by some standards, but rejected by the standards adhered to by a lot of reviewers, um, what people end up doing is just not doing structural equation modeling. They just say, well, I'll just run some regression models and, um, and you know, just average all 18 of those trait reactance items into one trait reactance variable and, you know, just do everything in, you know, uh, manifest regression analysis. Um, which, okay, fair enough. You know, I've done a lot of regression analysis. That's that's a perfectly suitable approach. I have videos on here showing how to do that. But, um, you know, th there is some argument about whether parceling, is, you know, whether we should allow parceling. I very much agree with Todd Little and his colleagues that uh, there doesn't need to be controversy about that. And that if parceling gets us into a space where we can do you know, latent variable structural equation modeling, uh, correcting for measurement error, uh, gain a lot of the benefits of flexibility um, and you know, estimating latent relationships with only true variance information and no um, error variance, then I think we should keep, you know, I, I think that's a good argument for using parceling um, and then not always having to have a fight with reviewers about whether the who and Bentler um, model fit recommendations are appropriate. So that's my opinion on parceling. Hopefully this video at least shows you how to parcel and gives you some resources if you want to read more about parceling and demonstrates that parceling in most instances will solve the model fit problem. It's important to emphasize that when you parcel, you need to do it you know, in ways that are theoretically justified, and you need to do it after investigating your model for important misspecification and identifying all of the causes for misfit so that the parceling isn't papering over model misspecification. But if you follow the steps outlined in videos one, two, and three, and then construct your parcels following the recommendations in that little article, um, you should be in good shape. 
I will make another video about how to parcel if you have sub factors in your variable where there are two different strategies depending on what you want to do with the sub factors. Um, but if you just have a big scale and you only want to measure one variable and, and there aren't sub dimensions that you're aware of, then this is the approach that I would recommend, the balancing approach that we did here. Thanks for watching.